and welcome! Today I'm going to be making some scenery for Warhammer the Old World, but I'm afraid this is not one of my previous Old World terrain building videos. There is no cardboard in sight today, so therefore the risk of me gluing myself to it at least is fairly minimal. Now, today we are celebrating the return of some classic Warhammer fantasy battle scenery to Warhammer the Old World, namely the plastic hills, manor house, tower, chapel, walls and fences. Uh, yeah, I've got, I'm fortunate enough to have still left over from I think I think I got these during 7th edition I'm, I'm fairly sure that's when I bought them uh, some plastic hills the plastic tower plastic man has I've got a, a full set basically you may have seen them in some of my previous fantasy battle kind of battle report videos this normally has shadow warriors hiding in it from Mike's high elves uh, but I've never really gotten around to getting fully painted it's never really been more than just kind of spray undercoated this, therefore, seemed like the ideal opportunity to show you how you can get some of this new, well, some of this old new plastic scenery tabletop ready in a jiffy. So, without further ado, let's dive in. So, as you can see, the, the tower is already assembled and I've given it a spray undercoat of grey. Uh, the next stage then is going to be to just get some base coats on there. And my basic plan for that is I'm just going to slap everything that's kind of not the grey stones or this kind of scully area, a coat of uh, one of my favourite colours, Rakarth Flesh. So this I kind of tend to think of as being the original kind of Denab stone, uh, but updated for the current paint range. It's really nifty if you want a kind of an off-white, earthy white. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to quickly slap that on here. Uh, whilst I'm doing that, let me just briefly explain what I have done to the hill. The hill has been... <laughs> Basically, since the point I bought it, since I think they released the spray, it was given a blast of Death Guard green spray. Other sprays are now available, but I would suggest for the purposes of painting this and for using this kind of quick speed paint tutorial, that you uh, give it a similar kind of murky green or, or off green kind of undercoat. Uh, it will work well with what I'm going to suggest that we do next. Okay, so without further ado, let's get some Rakarth flesh on here. Uh, catch you in a sec. You don't have to be too neat with this because we are going to be basically blasting this with some contrast paints afterwards. It's just that having the Rakarth flesh on here first will give it a better definition afterwards. But that is most of a side done already. Cool, okay. Let that dry. Um, whilst that's drying, let me talk to you about this hill. So, like I said, it's been given just a quick green undercoat. There's a reason for this. There is a trick. If, if you want your hill to look, you know, realistic and, and like you know, something out of a, a nature photo, then ignore this. If you want your hill on the tabletop, quick and looking good, this is a trick that I discovered for getting that kind of classic fifth, kind of fourth edition green style scenery really quickly. Move the tail to one side and let me grab a pot of Karandras green contrast paint. Green base, green paint. Big brush. Let's go. Literally, what I discovered was painting over the first green with the green contrast, and you can even give a bit of water to make it go further. Doesn't really matter because we're going to cover over this with some static grass in a bit, but it gives it a kind of a vibrancy as an undertone which just looks great. And even better, this is my, one of my favorite all-time hobby tips, you can use something like a texture paint on your bases, like Valhill, Valhill, Valhillen, I can't speak. You can use a texture paint on your bases, something like Valhallen Blizzard, you know, the white kind of snow texture paint. When it's dry, give it a blast of this, and it just instantly gets that kind of goblin green look. Mantis Warrior Green also works, but yeah. For now, I want proper bright green to go underneath my grass. Nice, healthy, kind of doobly style hill. And what I might do is I might actually mix a bit of Mantis Warrior in on this as well, so do some patches of each so I get a bit of definition. I'm liking that idea. I'm liking that idea. I've got both. Why not use both? If I do it while the paint is wet, they will blend as well. Even better. Temptation to just do like I did with my Null Oil video and just pour a pot of this, but it would make a horrendous mess, so I'm not doing that. Okay, bear with me. Let me grab myself some Mantis Warrior. Okay, Mantis Warrior Green. I think from memory, this one works even better than kind of 
Carandas green for that kind of goblin green-esque look on the finished base. Bit of water and mixy, mixy, mix. Okay, this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to employ the Mel Brooks Spaceballs technology and prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forward. Right, that needs to dry for a little while. So whilst that's drying, whilst that's dry, then I'm gonna now move on to the tower. Uh, the tower, I, I did, I did blue peated this. So I did two of the sides earlier. So I know for a fact that those are dry and I'm waiting for the other two sides to dry, which are mostly dry. The plan on this is gonna be giving everything kind of a coat of Agrat's earth shade. But before I do that, I want to hit all of the stonework up with basilican gray contrast. And this is all kind of the, the gray bricks around the base of the tower, but crucially, not the chimney. The chimney I've got a plan for. I want that to look like red brick. And I'm going to do that in a quick way. So, okay. The silicon grey. Stick my hand back inside the tower. Let's get some grey. And let's just get the stones. It's important to get in between the bricks on this. Because you don't want to have lighter bits in what should otherwise be the shadows. Um, I'm going to paint this and I will catch up with you in a few. Okay, so that needs time to dry. However, we can still keep slapping paint on this thing because there's so many different kind of surfaces, even while that's drying. Now I have here a pot of Bugman's Glow skin tone paint. And the plan with this is this brick chimney and the bricked up window on one of the sides of this, all of that kind of brick, I just want to give it a coat of Bugman's Glow for the minute. There's going to be a reason for this a little bit later on. Don't worry if you get it on the metal bracings on this, really doesn't matter. Likewise, the chain supporting it to the side of the tower. It's perfectly okay. In case you were wondering, I've painted everything thus far with a medium shade brush. And let's just find that bricked up window. There it is, just underneath the chimney. Which I suppose makes sense, actually. I have no idea if this is what I was thinking when I built it. But if you had a chimney going directly above the window, then the chimney would continue down behind the window. There we go, right, that genuinely does need time to dry now. So I'm gonna quickly wash off my brush and I will catch you back here when this is all dry. Okay, status update. The hill is very nearly dry, uh, but the tower is dry enough for the next stage. Um, there's gonna be a few little kind of detail bits that I wanna add. So there's gonna be some metal work that needs getting added to it. Uh, the wood boards at the top of the tower need a coat of contrast and also there's a wide band around the middle of the tower now you can just paint this with the same kind of rakar flesh technique that i did the rest of the tower but i want to give this a little bit of something nice looking i'm going to give it a blue band as if that has been given some special paintwork to make it look nice i'm going with a dark blue kind of in honor of the shadow warriors that usually hide inside this tower uh, so let's do the blue first then i'll do the wood at the top of the tower and then once that's all dry we'll do the metal work okay so first things first i've got a pot of leviadon blue nice dark blue contrast to start us off slip my hand inside the tower grab some blue and away i go i'm going with a dark blue because my plan is that i can then treat over the top of it with some lighter layer paint blues but a dark blue base coat first will give it some good kind of shading uh, and this is basically the same technique that I'm getting with going for with the Rachel Flesh is that kind of a, a darker base coat that I'm going to just essentially sponge and brush over the top the lighter colors there we go next up the wood on the top uh, I like to use Gargax Sewer as a base coat for wood. It's kind of got a nice kind of wood grain color color to it, which at the end of the day is what I'm going for because I'm going to dry brush over the top of this once it's dry. So nice coat of Gargax all over the interior of the tower top. Here I am going to be careful so I don't get the inside edges of the walls. There we go. What I'll do is in a minute whilst this is drying, I will do you a quick kind of close up video 
of how this is looking. Uh, there is one final thing I want to do before I move on to doing the metal, and it's the first dry brush of this. I've got here a pot of Kindle Flame. It's a nice kind of bright orangey colour. Just going to get some on my brush. Not much, just a little. There we go. Let that dry. And then there's a wash that's going over the top of that before we get to the metal on that. Hill's still drying. Catch you in a few minutes. Okay, so that Kindle Flame is dry. The next stage, before I do the metal work, is the sneaky one. So we've done already Bugman's Glow, uh, Bugman's Glow <laughs> Flesh Paint and then a quick dry brush of Kindle Flame. So we've got at the moment kind of a peachy looking skin colour. The trick now to get that into a brick effect is I'm going to slap some Griff Hound Orange contrast paint over the top. Really quick and dirty. And I'm going to water it down a little bit as well as I go. Because I don't want it to be too on the nose. What I'll do before I do the metal, I will show you how this is looking. Because I'm really pleased with how this is looking. There we go. Right, let me give you a quick close-up on these two. Okay, so that's dry. As you can see, the hill, I've done the, the little bits of rocks just with a little bit of um, Codex Grey, or Dawnstone as it's called now. It, it could, you honestly could just leave it like that. I mean, I would be perfectly happy with how I saw that on the tabletop and I'd kind of go, yeah, that's tabletop quality. That's just kind of, like I said, a mix of two different green contrasts and some detail picked out in grey and the texture that's on the model already pretty much makes it look awesome but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some static grass to this uh, and I'm going to maybe I'm thinking because uh, I've got a few I've got a small addiction to static grass tufts I might add a few of those as well just around and in between some of the rocks just to give it a little bit more detail uh, but genuinely that could be it if you've got the hill that could be ready to go for the tabletop. Um, likewise, let's move over to the tower. So yeah, the tower, I've now picked out the, the metal work that was just picked out with a little bit of iron hand steel. And again, you could call that ready. You could call that tabletop ready if you wanted to. Um, it's a little dark. I'm, I'm gonna, at the very least, wash over pretty much all of the gray stone and the Rakarth flesh walls with some sort of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, and then we'll see how it looks. Um, but uh, again, <laughs> basic grey spray and then some base coats and contrast paints. Basic grey spray and then some uh, <laughs> base coats and contrast paints. And you could just call that ready. Uh, but nonetheless, let's do a little bit more on it and then we'll see how it looks. Agrax Earthshade then. I've done the metal work first because that way uh, the Agrax Earthshade will kind of shade basically everything. It'll get in between the bricks, make it look a bit grimy. It'll shade the walls and damp it down, run into all kind of little cracks and details. Uh, and it'll go over the metal as well and make the metal look a bit aged and weathered. So it basically saving myself time. The only bits I'm not gonna Agrax Earthshade over is my chimney. I'm gonna be very careful and only pick up kind of the metal and the gray stone in relation to that. And the blue band that we've painted around the middle, that's not gonna get any Agrax Earthshade either. I am also going to put a little bit of Agrax Earth shade just over all of the dots of kind of Dawnstone grey rocks that I painted on the hill. Uh, however, I don't want to make a mess of my hobby table for this, so I have grabbed just a cheap plastic blue tray. I'm going to put both of these on. Right, we'll do this one first, uh, just so that it catches any drips. Uh, one pot of Agrax. Give it a shake to get everything mixed together, and away we go. Uh, once again, I'm going to space balls this and use fast forward. I have also grabbed just an old large Citadel dry brush uh, to do this, just to save myself some time. Uh, just daub this on and away I go. Uh, and again, I might just add a bit of water as I go, just to help spread it around. Uh, if you do that, just be careful though, make sure you've got clean water, because otherwise any impurities or any other leftover paint that you've got in the water will just make a bit of a mess of your miniature. Fast forward. So both of those have got 
Agrax Earthshade on. Like you can see, it just adds a bit of depth and detail around the rocks on the hill. I genuinely feel like I could just call that hill done, but I am going to do the next stage for the purposes of this video. Uh, the tower, again, you can see it's all kind of just dirtied down now. Um, what we're going to do to the tower next is essentially a whole bunch of dry brushing and sponging. So bear with me a moment and we will shift over to that. Right! Dry brushing time. Okay, so I've got a selection of paints that I'm going to use to dry brush. The first one I want to crack off with is some Dawnstone, or Codex Grey as I still tend to think of it. Uh, the plan for this is this is going to be used as a fairly heavy dry brush. I mean, it's almost a wet brush. I want to cover most of the stonework aside from kind of any imperfections or depths between the cracks. So I'm going to fairly heavily dry brush all of the rock work on th this with that. Uh, I will show you what that looks like once it's done. Following on from that, then the next stage is going to be I'm going to do the blue border that's around the middle of the tower. That's getting a essentially a, a kind of like a, more of a stipply type dry brush of Art Dorfgaard blue. There's a bunch of kind of nice detail around that middle section. So there's the kind of uh, Karl Franz uh, Imperial crosses, there's the skulls and the alcoves. I'm going to just dry brush everything with this blue. And then the plan is to go back and kind of pick those details out with some bone and some gold. Uh, final one that's going to happen then is the the area that up until now has been this kind of dirty off-white that's been done with Rakarth flesh and uh, Earthshade. I'm going to sponge it in two stages. First sponging is going to be a sponging of a shabti bone. Then I'm going to sponge over that with a thinner sponging, so leaving areas of the Ashanti bones showing through with Screaming Skull. Uh, so I'm going to do all of that and I'll show you how it looks once it's been done. I'll do it kind of a, a stage by stage, I'll dry brush it, then show you how it looks, then I'll do the next stage and I'll show you how it looks and we'll see how we get on. Okay. Okay, so that is the grey hurriedly dry brushed over the top of that. I'm relatively happy with how that's gone. I'm going to do the blue next. Whilst I had the grey out, I also gave a quick dry brush over the stones that I had Agrax Earthshade on the hill. Uh, the only thing that is left on the hill, and the reason why it's currently on a tray now, is to attack it with some static grass, which I'm going to do once I have done all the dry brushing on the tower. Let's carry on with the dry brushing. Blue next, like I said, Art Dorf Guard Blue. It's just kind of a nice mid-tone blue, and it will look really nice kind of on the stonework, because it's got kind of a, an almost pastely shade to it. What I might just do on the big flat section above the doorway here is I might attack that with a bit of sponge rather than doing that with a dry brush. There we go. So there is my blue border between the wall sections. Got a sneaky little trick for the grey stone either side of that blue border. So don't worry a little bit if you get some of the blue on that because I'll show you my sneaky trick for that at the end. Uh, I'm now going to move on to sponging the <laughs> tower surfaces. That's the big heavy part of the labour so I'm going to turn the camera off while I do that and I will catch up with you once that is done. Right, that's the sponging done then. This is now looking really good. I'm really chuffed with how this has come out. In case you, uh, you were wondering what I mean by when I'm talking about the sponging, I've literally got some little bits of just soft yellow sponge, cut off a, a clean, unused dishwashing sponge that I've just been dipping in the paint and just kind of stippling over the surface of the bits of the area that I want to look like kind of rough plaster work. It looks really good in terms of an effect for a, a finish. Um, again, I, I say this a lot, I could consider this to be done now, but I, I am going to do a few more little kind of fine details just to essentially fine tune it. None of this is essential. You could absolutely just stick that on the tabletop now and go, Bosh! That is a finished tower. I am happy with it. Uh, what I am going to do is I've got some Sylvaneth bark, which I'm going to just gently dry brush over the woodwork at the top of the tower to make it look a bit lighter. Uh, there is some exposed kind of little wooden beams that stick out underneath the tower top and abut the top of the blue border. Those I'm going to just give a quick coat of uh, Steel Legion drab and then a, a wash just of something like, um, I mean, I might give it a wash of just like Agrax Earthshade or something, just again to kind of fill in the wood grain, just to give those a bit more detail. I did mention there was something that I wanted to do to the border between the kind of top and bottom of the blue section, just to, to give it a nice little finish. And I do that now on camera. And then I, the other little tips and bits that I'll describe to you, I'm going to do off camera. Uh, so this is how I think of this is in the style of kind of a, a classic, uh, a, a 
tower that perhaps was built uh, at the time as a particularly rich or, or fanciful uh, building, it might have had a gold leaf applied to that kind of border that unfortunately over time has worn away. Simplest way that I can apply that is I'm going to, wrong gold, I'm going to get some Liberator gold. And just like I sponged the, uh, the, the kind of bone colour on and I sponged the blue, I'm just going to sponge a little bit of the edges of this border with some Liberator gold, just essentially to almost look like weathering, except what I'm applying is the leftover gold that was still on this uh, border, essentially, before it's kind of worn away. So I'm going to just go around and gently stipple all along the edges of this border with a bit of gold, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. There we go, that's the stippling finished, so I'll just show you how that has come out. I'm really pleased with how that looks. Um, a few other little bits I'm going to do. So the skulls in the blue alcoves, those need to be picked out. They're not real skulls, they're supposed to be decorative skulls. So I think what I'm going to do with those is just, again, same gold that I've used to do the edging. I might just dry brush those with that. Or I could do them kind of a, a lighter grey. That can give some nice contrast. Uh, the, the golden kind of... Uh, crest symbols that are on one side of it. I think I'm going to do that in a different shade of gold. I'm going to dry brush a bit of uh, Retributor armour over those. Uh, and the other little bits and details I just want to do on this are things like the brickwork on the chimney breast, in between the bricks. I think it would look quite nice if there was some mortar showing up there. How I'm going to achieve that is I'm going to water down a bit of Dawnstone with some Lamian medium. Just run that into the gaps between the bricks. Let this rest and dry on its side with that uh, between the different bricks. That'll give that a nice kind of hopefully mortared chimney breast effect. Uh, I'm going to apply a bit of rust as well to just things like the bit of metal bracings, the, the metal chains and stuff that are holding the chimney up. Any kind of metal area that would be particularly exposed to the elements, I'm going to kind of more heavily go after with rust. My preferred recipe for that is I get a bit of Mornfang brown, I kind of water it down, then I get a bit of Deathclaw brown, and then you just stipple little patches of that over the top. Finally, just a final, very gentle top surface stipple with some Troll Slayer orange, and that'll look really nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply all of those details to this tower, and then I will show you the finished article. But before we do that, there is one other thing that is remaining to be done, and there is a reason why I've kept my blue tray handy here. Like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with how this hill looks just as in. You could absolutely just stick it on the tabletop as this kind of green, bright green painted hill. But I've got a great big tub of static grass here and some glue, some Elmer's glue, uh, PVA if you're here in the UK. I'm going to paint over some of the upper surfaces of this with some glue and then just gently sprinkle some gra grass over the top leave it to dry overnight, and then I will include that at the end of this video as well, so you can see how it looks. And as I've already mentioned, I have a bit of a tuft obsession. I love kind of basing tufts and that. I've got a big selection of them. I might add a few different ones of those, especially kind of in amongst the rock crumps to represent weeds that are growing up on my hill. Nothing that's going to get in the way of putting miniatures on this, because that's, at the end of the day, the purpose of this hill is it's, it's for gaming. But just to make this look a little bit stand out. Um, I'll do all of that, and then I will show you the finished article for both of these. I realise as well, I've been kind of rabbiting on about all the different paints that I've been using. What I would do is I will put those paints in the description at the end. Okay, right. I better get gluing. Let's get some glue. <laughs> Squeeze some out on top. And I'm going to use that same <laughs> big old knackered dry brush that I was using earlier for the Agrax Earthshade to just spread this glue around a bit. Okay, catch up with me in a second when I've got the glue all squidged out and I'm ready to paint, uh, to dribble some static grass on. I'll just show you that <laughs> covered in glue before I start sprinkling grass on it because that is quite satisfying actually, dousing the top of that in glue. You might wonder why have I gone to all the trouble of painting it green before I start dousing it with uh, static grass? Well, the reason for that is I've previously found that when I've done things like when I did my river tile section, if you've, if you've watched the Building War Games Terrain riverboard section, um, I found that a lot of the grass still kind of showed what was underneath showing through, and it's just really helpful if that's a colour that kind of complements the grass that you're going with. Uh, right, I have, an important note here, non-sticky fingers, because I don't want the glue grass sticking to me, I want it sticking to the board. I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. I am kind of just 
pinching and sprinkling because I want to try and break it up as much as possible. I don't want it going on as clumpy. There is a whole series of YouTube videos out there that I've watched of people doing this and they use all kinds of amazing technology using, you know, electric static grass breaker uppers and things that cause the static grass to adhere to the thing that they're uh, attaching it to through the power of electricity and they sieve it and, and all that stuff. And I am just, I'm just throwing myself in and getting myself absolutely covered in grass because, well, I'm me. And this is how I do videos. This is how I do crafts. Like it says in the description, enthusiastically, if ineptly, hobbying. Just keep sprinkling. The benefit of doing this on the tray instead, if you're wondering why I've done this on the tray, it's because when this is dry, so when I'm thoroughly happy that all the glue has dried out and everything that was going to stick has stuck, I can just tip what's left of the static grass off onto the tray, which is what I did, again, when I did the river tile section. And then any of the static grass that hasn't stuck will stick onto the tray and I can then just kind of brush it up, put it back in the pot and use it again. Right, leave me doing this for a minute and I will catch up with you when I've finished sprinkling. Right, I'm just gently patting it down a little bit to try and make sure that where as much as possible it actually adheres to the glue that I've scattered on here. And I'm really happy with how this is looking. Definitely buy myself a pack of two more of these so I can have three hills on my board. Although Games Workshop, if you're watching, um, I'd, I'd love it if you could re-release the hill that kind of splits up into corners and makes edges for the hills at the edges of boards because that's really cool as well. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. I'm covered in grass. I'm not going to end up covered in glue, said Ben. I'm not going to glue myself to anything when I make this video. I'm not doing cardboard. It'll be fine. Yeah, right. There you go. That is the hill covered in grass. That has used almost everything that was in my Warlord Games summer grass tub. But I'm hopeful that I'll get some of it back once this is dry. Pat, pat, pat. Okay, I'm going to catch up to you tomorrow morning when this has dried. I added some tufts. The final details have been added to the tower and I will show you the finished projects. And then perhaps just have a little kind of chat about how I felt it went. But in, all in all, this has been one evening's work and I've done two pieces of scenery. I'm well chuffed with that. And this is certainly manageable in an evening if you end up buying these sets. Catch you tomorrow morning. Good morning. The tower then is done. I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I'll put up a, a close up kind of rotating view of it at the end of this video so you can check that out. But that is an entire plastic tower painted in basically an evening and a hill done as well. Um, the, the hill is still covered in glass, grass. As I said, I've left it overnight to dry out. You can see it there. I'm going to just gently tap it against the tray now and get some of that excess off. Do it from this side as well. All of this grass that's left on here can go back in the tub to be used again. And then I've got here just a large decorator's brush. I use this just kind of for dusting uh, miniatures and, and other bits and tasks like that, but it's really useful for brushing off the excess grass as well. Um, it does end up with a slight greenish tinge on the end, but that, well, that brushes off on its own as well. That has come out really nicely. I cannot wait to use these on the gaming table. I'm going to have to get another game of either the Old World or 5th edition or 6th uh, uh, edition fantasy uh, to use these. Let me know in the comments down below which one you'd rather see a battle report video for. Another 5th edition battle report, 6th edition battle report or the Old World. Which one's your preference? Ugh. I'm sure there will probably still be some spare static grass that's left over as well. What I might do is give this, when I give the tower a blast of purity seal to make sure the excess paint doesn't rub off whilst I'm using it on the gaming table, I might give the hill a little dust with that as well, just to help seal any of this leftover grass onto the hill. There we go, that's done. One hill, all complete. Like I said, I might add a few little tufts to that. I'm not sure it actually needs them. I think that might actually detract from it. And I can even put the tower 
on top of it. And that looks really nice as well. There we go. Tower on a hill. What could be better than that? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that this has perhaps inspired you to go out and get your own scenery and paint it up. If you do, please, if you put photos online on Instagram or on Twitter or whatever, tag me in because I'd love to see them. Uh, if you are not already a subscriber to the channel, please do me a favour, click that subscribe button. I'm nearly at 2,000 subscribers. This week I got a reminder that it was a year ago that I hit 1,000, so it'd be really cool if this week I could hit that magic 2K and, and basically have it within 12 months I'd got an extra 1,000 and subscribers. Right, well, I, I've got to go and get some games of uh, Old World in, or 5th or edition, or 6th or edition fantasy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please keep watching to the end to see just kind of the final glamour shot of these finished pieces of scenery. As ever otherwise, though, I will catch you next time. Bye for now!